우리 아, 아파트가 4층, 4, 3층에서 어, 시끄럽다고 어, 조용히 해달라고 과이어트 공, 공 가지고 맨날 저 그래가지고 그래서 내가 이제 그 이불을 깔고 어, 이불을 깔을 깔고 이제 이렇게 우리 그 리프팅 이렇게 해왔고 축구에 대한 열정을 한 번도 어, 나 정말 축구 싫어라는 말은 한 번도 표현을 하지 않았어요 분명한 거 자세하게 기억은 안 나는데 대전 월드 경기장에서 다른 팀이 경기하는 걸 한번 보긴 봤고. 또 한국 경기가 있을 때는 집 앞에 큰 나름 큰 운동장이 있어서 거기서 대형 스크린으로 다 틀어줬어요 경기를 그래서 그 경기를 진짜 그 농구 골대가 있거든요 근데 거기 어린애들이 자주 올라가서 이제 놀던 그런 데인데 전 항상 거기 올라가서 이제 응원하고 그래서 한국이 그때 당시 뭐 축구에 대해서 자세히 모르니까 그냥 진짜 그냥 즐기는 분위기에서 막 한국 선수들 막 응원하고 그렇게 했던 것 같고 진짜 지금 제가 축구 선수로서 프로 선수로서 그리고 국가대표 선수로서 뛰면서 느끼는 건데 아 그때 당시에 지금 선배님들이 얼마나 대단한 업적을 이룬 건지 새삼 느끼게 되는 것 같아서 참그 선배님들이 부러우면서도 참 존경할 수밖에 없게 되는 것 같아요 임범이를 처음 만났을 때또 대전 시티즌에 감독을 해서 만났을 때첫 번째는 임범이는 제가 훈련하는 지도하는 것에 대해서 아주 그 복습과 예습을 잘하는 선수였단 말이죠. 그래서 대전 시티에 있을 때그 친구에 대한 어떤 플레이나 앞으로의 성장 가능성을 확신을 갖고 있었기 때문에 매번 경기 때 중용, 중용을 했고 아주 대전 시티즌의 대전의 아들이라는 표시가까지 얻을 정도로 제가 어, 대전 시티즌 감독을 했을 때 기회라든지 결과라든지 이런 것들을 보여줘서 아주 대전에서는 가장 임팩트 있는 선수가 되지 않았나 이렇게 생각합니다. He's always been, you know, one of the top prospects in Korea. Um, just a real skillful player. And when he won the Asian Games, that was really a breakthrough moment for him because that's how that that sort of became a funnel for him to get into the senior national team as well. And he got off to a flying start for the national team. And that's when that's how he was able to build a name for himself in Korea. 벤쿠버의 그 그렉 부사장님께서 대전에 방문하셔서 밤중에 나하고 자몽티를 한잔 하시고 가셨는데 그때 그 벤쿠버 그렉 부사장님의 적극적 의지 또 그러면서 어떤 그 비전 제시 이런 부분들이 벤쿠버 팀을 그 결정하는데 많은 일조를 했고요 또. 우리 가족을 또 초청을 해서 가족이 가서 직접 보고 나름 음 어떤 확신이라든지 이런 것들을 가지고 오므로 인해서 벤쿠버에 가게 됐던 것 같아요. He really felt like people within the club at Vancouver really wanted him to be here. There was other clubs interested. So there was a lot of doubt, and we had to sell the, the project, selling the club, selling the city, selling the league. We wanted to make sure that we brought a player that, that has something different in his game. I was very interested in the 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 game. I was very i n t e r e s t 그 사람으로서 참 뭐랄까 좀 아껴주고 이 나를 진짜 원하는구나 라는 그런 뭔가 그런 걸 되게 잘 보여줬던 클럽이 이 클럽이고 Before he came here, I told to the club he is the one of the, the best talent player in Asia I'm still thinking like that because uh, he's uh, uh, he has a uh, very good uh, technique and then the shooting or cross and the corner kick the ability also though he has a very strong mentality and an attitude about playing football 봐 올라 가자 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 저 뭐야 저거 뭐야 물어 가서 he has to take a shower 축구 외적인 것을 먼저 얘기를 하자면 살기에 너무 너무너무 완벽한 곳인 것 같고 
축구에 집중할 수 있고 어, 다른 생각들을 할 필요가 없을 정도로 워낙 살기 좋고 그런 부분에 있어서 스트레스를 많이 받는 친구들도 있고 그래서 저도 걱정을 했었지만 저는 뭐 전혀 그런 외적인 문제에서는 별다른 문제가 전혀 없고 I have I have a lot of Iraqi fans. Say in Arabic. Indi. Indi. Fans. Indi fans. Iraqi. What? Iraqi. Iraqi. Wire. Wire. Shukran Jazilan. Shukran Jazilan. No, Jazilan. No, Shukran Jazilan. Shukran Jazilan. 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 And they say. He's a really funny guy. His English is is amazing now, and he needs to speak more. But he's 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 very funny. I think we just kind of gravitated towards each other from the beginning, and which is kind of cool. Guys from different nations, different countries, all speaking different languages can connect so easily. Hey Ali, Ali, kick the ball as high as you can. Ali, you don't have technique anymore. Rafi, he has a lot of technique. <웃음> 선수들도 정말 뭐 알리나, 라스티나, 프레디나 정말 잘 챙겨주고 제가 영어를 못해도 진짜 언어가 달라도 진짜 친한 친구가 될수 있구나라는 거를 느끼게 해준 친구들이어서 너무 너무 고맙게 생각하고 있어요. With every game, he's gotten better and better in the league. He's gotten better and better with the club. So I think he still has a great future ahead of him. I was talking to the manager to me. I was with MLS players, for example, Zlatan, Rooney, Carlos Vela, but I was with other players, but I was with other players. But I was with other players, but I was with other players. 용병 생활이 처음이니까 조금 더 잘하고 싶고 어, 어떨 때는 때로는 또 결과를 내고 싶은 마음도 욕심도 있었기 때문에 혼자 이제 그런 부분 부, 부담감이랄까 좀 그런 부분들을 가지지 않았었나라는 생각을 하고 He wants to do well for this city. He wants to do well for this team, uh, and you you can tell he's he's really you know fallen in love with Vancouver. His dog's name is Coover, uh, you know. So he's you know he's grateful that the club has brought him here, uh, and he wants to do as much as he can to help the team have success. Oh, up there. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, bang! Yeah, that's it. 이 팀에 오면서 또 스스로 다짐했던 것 중에 하나는 내가 대전에서 받았던 그런 어 정말 넘치는 사랑을 벤쿠버에 가서도 받아보자 어 팬분들이 최고 아끼는 선수가 되고 싶다라는 생각을 하고 이곳에 온 거여서 뭐 이미 많은 분들이 정말 저를 많이 응원해 주시고 진짜 한국 분 뿐만 아니라 진짜 여기 현지 팬분들도 많이 좋아해 주시고 좀 응원을 해 주셔서 너무너무 감사하게 생각하고 있고 어 아직 제 모습, 제 100% 모습에 진짜 50%도 보여주지 않았다라고 스스로 생각을 하고 있기 때문에 어 스스로 100% 모습을 아 여기 팬분들한테도 보여줬다라고 어, 자부심을 가질 수 있게끔 더 노력할 테니까 많이 지금처럼 응원을 해주셨으면 좋겠고 또 한국 분들께 특별히 더 감사하게 생각하고 있고 어, 더 열심히 더 좋은 모습 보여서 여기 계신 한국 분들께 어, 자부심이 될수 있게끔 노력을 하겠, 할 테니까 많이 응원해 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you for supporting my caps fan. Uh, we still have to keep going. Just trust us. Thank you so much. She asked me, son, when I go, will you buy me a house of gold? And when your father turns to stone, will you take care? 
Vancouver is one of the most beautiful places in all of North America, from the sea, the sky, the mountains. It's really breathtaking here. So when Jay Demerit, Whitecaps legend, hit me up and was like, Kaylin, come to my city and come up to the soccer camp that I'm doing on First Nations land, I jumped at the opportunity. Um, being half Aboriginal Australian myself, Native people's struggles, their culture, their history, that's always been a big part of my life. And you see it everywhere here in Vancouver, from the totems to the art around the city. I used to come up here as a kid and camp on Vancouver Island with my mom for weeks on end. But I wanted to come back now and see what this indigenous population is facing right now and possibly where they're headed in the future. Everywhere, I see oh, everywhere. What are you doing up here? Oh, well, this is a uh, handheld beer drum. I used the drum in the front row for the Whitecaps game. Found the First Nation, located in Fort Langley beside the Fraser River. This is what we call a smokehouse man stick. Okay. So it was a fishing rod, right? That's awesome. We live, we live right beside the river, right? You know, I'm Aboriginal Australian. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. I know, we're all related. Yeah. Pacific, you know, South Pacific, yep. North Pacific. That's right, yeah, we're covering it all, man. We're all related somehow. Is there a lot of indigenous people who support the, support the club as well? Yeah, there's myself. There's my friends from uh, Portland, Tsleil-Waututh, and uh, I got some friends from uh, Yukon. So it's nice to see a lot of uh, indigenous, Aboriginal people here. Hope and health, and uh, the White House have been great with just building communities. Whitecaps Hope and Health Programming is in its fifth year now, getting Aboriginal kids playing soccer, encouraging healthy lifestyles, and just showing them that the club and the community cares about them and their future. Former Whitecaps captain Jay Demerit is connecting the native populations in his own way, hosting the Rise and Shine overnight camp on First Nations land, and giving kids from all over an incredible opportunity to learn from a World Cup veteran on the field, but also about life beyond soccer. Just little Demerit soldiers out there walking ready to go, Pemberton. When I'm done playing, I'm going to start this camp where the kids are going to learn something more about soccer. We're going to put them through all sorts of things they're going to have to deal with in the real world. And then hopefully, the kids will either make it as pros and, 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 and have more knowledge of how to be a good pro. And if they don't, they're going to have planted seeds way before it's way too late. The people that truly live their passions are the people that are the happiest. And that's what I want to create. I want to create more passions and, 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 and happy people. We played against each other a couple times. And I've seen a lot of things on a soccer field that I thought I couldn't be shocked. I was running down the field, and I remember running towards the ball, and over my shoulder, I just hear a <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, Jay Demerit? <laughs> Is there a dog behind me? This guy, I think, <laughs> wants to win more than I want to win. <laughs> and then I came to find out it was true. When I first met him, he would be dreaming in the middle of the night and talking in his sleep like he was doing an interview, like trying to like speak for how poorly the team were performing. True. Like, oh, I think it's a managerial issue, like kind of... Like, in know, my like sleep, it was, like it was like, that's how much it was bothering me. It was like so on his mind all the time. It was hilarious. Wow. But off the field and even on it, there's this uh, sort of aura of positivity and inclusiveness um, that's been a big part of like your life and the vision of this camp as well too, right? 100%. If I didn't have the positivity that I did and that I still do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here for sure. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, when you land on, in, on English shores, when you haven't been drafted and you're living in an attic with a college degree in your pocket and making $40 a game in a place that's so foreign to you because you don't know, know one person on the island. You know, positivity is the only thing that got me through that. The camp here, of course, is, is very diverse and our fields are being played on First Nation land as well. How important is it for you to have that uh, inclusive vision and to 
um, reflect the community, especially here in British Columbia. Well, I think you just touched on it. You know, community for me is, is the greatest connector around. When I moved to Vancouver, and, and, and also Whistler by meeting Ashley, you know, I, I recognized how strong the community is up here. Um, it really spoke to me, and, and, it, and, and, I, and I really always felt like I've belonged in this culture, in this community. I know a lot of the, the people in this town now, including the First Nations community, and they're, you know, they're a community that cares, they're a community that want to help their youth, and, I, and I'm in that community. And if I can help them do that, then 100% I'm, I'm all for it. Now you have your family, your camps. Uh, and this is just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very, very segregated society that you can't segregate yourselves because you're only hurting yourself. So to change, it means that we have to come together and kick a ball. Lawrence Paul is a big deal here in the local art community, but also across the country as well and really speaks on behalf of the indigenous community and it shows up clearly in his work. Red man dance on sovereignty, dance me outside anywhere I want. Yeah. It's a great title. What does your last name mean? Man possesses many masks. Oh yeah. This is the hat you always your, your uh... Yeah, some of my new hats. I used to have a uh, version of a hat when I played soccer that be, kind of became my thing. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. I keep threatening to run for premier of this province just to change the name of British Columbia. I, I say it's New Nations, the province of New Nations. 52% of Native population is under the age of 16. They need direction, they need a good education, cultural revival, they need language. Do you see your art as a way to serve the community to document this history and future. I like to record history. I like to say things about it. I like to talk about these things. We're going to go through this journey of global warming. We have to look after this. It's, it's easy to say it, but it's not easy to do it. We are the first peoples, and every indigenous person wants to save this planet. They're treated like third-class citizens, turned on reservations. This is why you have very, very upset Aboriginal people that have a very hard time because their human rights are not recognized. These are answers that are fixable. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah? You like it? I feel great. Sure, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so nice of you. Sure. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to help me with the paint. Yeah? Don't have those skills. <laughs> Candace is a woman who works for the Vancouver Native Housing Initiative. It's a really interesting concept. They're creating spaces for indigenous artists to be able to work and live in residency and create opportunities in a city that's been very difficult for people just to be able to afford to live and work. This is a gray whale. On my grandfather's side, I'm gray whale clan. And then I have another one planned uh, of a wolf. It will be seen right there that um, I am wolf clan. Cool. Everywhere I've gone, it's like, it's so beautiful this city. I don't think I've ever been to a city this gorgeous. But it's expensive. It's crazy for for an artist who's, you know, from whatever background you come from, there's not a lot of spaces. How important is it just to provide like a space for people to have a stake in being in Vancouver? It's huge. I mean, it's a new model for social enterprising. So having the art gallery and the hotel support 24 artists in residency, I, you don't see it very often. The indigenous arts community is pretty small. You and Hannah go to Whitecaps games, right? Yes. That's yes. cool. What, uh, what do you like about them? I didn't grow up around soccer, like she's growing up around soccer, so I'm getting to experience it through a bit through her eyes. And I really enjoy that part of it. With the songs, and it's, it's very much a community. Being parallel to like how I grew up, it's just like when you have this thing that you have in common, and then everybody's involved, it's, it's that sense of community. It's like a fun experience to go get to see um, soccer being played live and like being surrounded by all the people who also like enjoy watching and playing soccer. You said that um, not a lot of girls are always playing. Like, why, why do you think that is? Gender roles probably. <laughs> like a lot more people, like girls are playing or like watching and it's really 
fun to see and nice to see. Being indigenous and being um, with your family history, is that history important to you? Yeah, it's very important and the artwork and everything to do with the culture is <laughs> amazing and it's really important to me because I wouldn't be who I am without like my ancestry and like culture and everything like that. You know, growing up for me, it was like when we would read textbooks about First Nations people, it was always read in the past. Everyone starts to think is that, you know, we're not here, but we are here. We're here and we work in galleries and we're doctors and we're lawyers and we're teachers. And it was never, uh, you know, savage. It's just a beautiful, beautiful culture. And, and what I see in the city here is people recognizing that and wanting to learn more and doing that through the art. The Aboriginal culture here is not just something you can buy in a gift shop. It's not a souvenir. These are people that are here that matter. It's not just a nod to the past and the heritage that they come from. With the environmental issues that are going on right now, these people matter more than ever, and they have something to say. The positive for me is you're starting to see some young voices emerging, whether that's in arts, music, culture, sports. These kids have a real understanding of the stories from where they come, but are also going to be leading the charge as far as where Vancouver is going. And for me, that's not just a positive for their communities, it's a positive for us all. Later, running down to riptide, taking away to the dark side. I want to be your left hand man. I love it when you're singing that song. And yeah. I got a lump in my throat because you're going to sing the words wrong. Okay, we're uh, rocking and rolling. <laughs> All right. Alfonso Davies running at Fisher. Gets to the outside of Fisher. The leggy 67. Can he get to the byline? He can. He keeps it in play too. Knocked over. Penalty. Alfonso Davies did it all himself. I'm proud of him. Because if I look back where we came from, refugee camp, no food, no clothes. And here we are today. He have everything I need. Fonzie's got uh, a level head on him, uh, which is important. Uh, no doubt he's got great skills, but uh, I've played with a lot of players who have great skills, and it's that uh, determination and that attention to detail that, that's going to take him uh, to the very top. It was, it was hard, it was dangerous, it was hard to live there because the only way you survive sometimes is you have to carry a gun too. And we, some of us didn't have any no interest in toting gun, so we decided to just escape from there. A time of terror for many Liberians. Oh, it's very scary before. Like you go somewhere, you have to cross over Bali to go and find food. So the best way is to just get out. It was safe to live there, but it was hard to live there. Yes, because everything is, you have to spend money. Water, food, whatsoever you think of, you have to buy it. So it was hard for us. Refugee life is like if they put you in a cortina and then they lock you up, no way to get out. You can't go far from the camp. Anything can happen to you. Yeah, we were worried because hunger kill people on the camp too anyways. It's not only uh -uh, war zone, but on the camp, if there's no food, people die, right? So we were worried sometimes if we don't have it, we're thinking how we would make it with him. With us, we can drink water and sleep, but he couldn't make it. So we'll every day make sure and have fun something for you to eat and make it in life. And they had a program they called resettlement. They say, okay, you have to fill in the form for Canada. I said, wow, I don't even know 
I, won't, I, I, let, I know I studied it on his so your study or history whatsoever, but I didn't know, I didn't even know somebody in Canada here. But however, it was okay. We went through the interview, everything, and then we mainly came over. With me, I was sad because all my family, they are back home, and I don't have no family here. But on the other hand, I was happy because I was coming with my husband and my kids to become better people. And here we are today. Yeah. Like, we were living on a refugee camp at first, so we were not in school. But when we came here, he started school. And now he left improving. I thank God for that. Back home in my country, if you don't have money, your kid don't go to school. Everything you have to pay. Sometimes a child will go to school after six months, after first semester, no school fee, yeah, they have to send them home. It's hard there, but here it's okay. 2006, I got here, I'm here, no problem, nothing, so at least I take this to be my second home. I only have this color, but now I think I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm really thankful and really grateful for what they have done um, throughout the years. They, uh, they carried the, the family to a safe environment like Canada, a safe country, and I'm really happy that they did that for us. And what does it mean to you to be Canadian? Being Canadian is a, a great honor. Not many people can say they're a Canadian citizen, especially knowing that Canada is one of the one of the best countries in the world. So it's a really great honor being able to call myself a Canadian citizen. I mean, it's a really big part of my life because that's when that's where I started started my soccer. That's when I played. Uh, that's where I went to school. That's where my family, my friends live. It's a really big part of me. We are right now in Clairview. This is the Clairview Rec Center. Uh, this is their outdoor turf field. Uh, Alfonso used to come train here quite a bit. Uh, he just lives two blocks away. So it was a nice uh, commute, just a quick walk over. I remember when uh, at 10 years old, Alfonso was babysitting his brother and sister. They were infants. He was changing diapers. He was uh, with them alone at home just because his parents were working shift work. And uh, it was just the three of them, uh, the three kids at that time. And uh, I think he, he had to mature really quickly because there was a lot of responsibility you know, on his shoulders. He was, uh, he was making their food for them. They didn't have uh, you know, the, the means to have a babysitter and so forth. And they had no relatives to help them. So Alfonso started at a very young age, where most 10 years old were probably playing more video games and, and with toys at that time, and, and Alfonso was changing diapers. He's just a very good kid, you know, uh, very respectful. And it's tough, you know, when you're coaching youth soccer, you, you, you work with a lot of different players and a lot of different um, mindsets. And Alfonso was always, uh, he was just always a team player, always a leader on the team, and you know, those, that, you remember that as a coach because he, he brought a lot to the game. He brought a lot to the team. He, he set an example. His hard work and just uh, the maturity is, you know, even at a very young age. I just remember that and I look back now and, you know, I see where he's gone now and hopefully um, it just, uh, he's that guy. He's, he's the real deal. So we're in the hallway of St. Nicholas uh, Junior High. This is our soccer academy wall. These were the three MVPs in a tournament that we had back in the day at uh, the Archbishop O'Leary Soccer Tournament. And uh, Gloria Mann is in the middle. He's with uh, the Vancouver USL team uh, now, and Alfonso's on the right there.
This is uh, our soccer record wall. Beep test, this is the one that Alfonso currently holds. This is our gymnasium. This is where we did um, a lot of the training with Alfonso. Our principal made a, a big poster of Alfonso and we put it up on the wall. We're in the uh, St. Nicholas Fitness Center. Alfonso and Glory would work out here every day after school. Alfonso's a, a, a leader and a role model for a lot of the younger kids in our academy. This is my classroom. This is where Alfonso had his homeroom in grade 9. And I taught him math in grade 8. And we ran the soccer academy uh, health component right out of this room. So when uh, Alfonso came to visit, uh, he went around to some of his teachers and wrote a letter to um, his teachers it says, Dear Boss, yo, thanks for being there for me. Thank you for all your support and all your advice. My goal is to play to reach professional level and probably play with some of the pros. Alfonso was a young prospect in, in obviously in Edmonton. Uh, his school, uh, St. Nicholas, uh, who had a connection with us, they brought their, their young players out every year to our academy centres and um, came out for like you know seasonal visits. And the head coach there highlighted Alfonso to us, and at that time he was 12 and a half, 13, and this little skinny, scrawny player that was was having tons of fun in, in his school and his school system. So he put us uh, on our radar, and, and from that point we we brought Alfonso out for a trial, and the. And the, the uh, Marco, the head coach of the, of the soccer school, came out with him, and yeah, he was uh, he was an interesting character. He was he was unassuming. He had that big grinning smile, as, as, as we know and everyone loves about him now. But uh, yeah, he 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 was very nervous, I would say, and and, and cautious. And in and, and week one, his eyes were you know were, were wide open, and and he he did okay. He wasn't a player at that time that said, "Oh, he's a player we need to." We need to, to bring out immediately. You know, it was it was a good introduction for him, but but he wasn't ready to come at that age. I was too young and emotionally not ready for it. But but then we brought him out a year later, um, and he had grown in all capacities emotionally, and his character and his physical qualities had improved. And and at that time, he was about 14, 14 and a half, and we were very very interested in him. And we worked with uh, with his uh, school and his, his community coach Nick and his parents to find the right time to bring him to Vancouver. I was excited, yes. I, I wanted to come, but my mom was hesitant yeah. to let me go, yeah. especially at the age of 14, going home, going from home. She's not keeping an eye on me, so she was really hesitant. Yeah, because <clears throat> that time he was like, I think, 14. Yeah. I was afraid because I know I had seen some kids sometimes see them on TV, what they're doing, or see them in the street, what they're doing. I don't want him to become a bad boy. So I told the guy that no, he's now leaving. And then maybe if he, 16, 17, he can go. But he promised me, he said, I will not be the same. I will now go to Vancouver and change. I will make you guys proud. Let me go. She told me I have to do my school even if I'm training, even signing first team. She told me. I want him going to school. Uh, I want him to finish high school. So that's, that's part of the deal, so that's why I'm fighting so hard to finish high school. My favorite class is culinary studies. I like to cook, I like to whip it in the kitchen. I'll probably make some nice pasta, some meatballs, you know, some sauce on there, some garlic bread on the side, and some a nice Caesar salad for you. They brought the papers and say, son, I say, see the age. And he said, no, papa, it's okay, I, I, I can make it. Just sign the papers. I said, okay. So he gave me the, 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 the belief that he could make it and he would make it. So I didn't have no time to lose. I just sign whatsoever they wanted me to sign. 
And then I was impressed, I was happy for him. So I called him and told him, say, congratulations, my son. I know that you, you, you sell it and you were going to make it. And he made it. This, this, from the beginning, when the, I, I can say when he was born, they stayed the same, no changes yet. Homo, quiet, you never want to come, somebody come say, oh, Afonso, this, 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 no. Just be easy, you step on him, you move your leg, he doesn't want to be bad away. Even if you know the best, you, don't, you can't respect people, no one will not like you. You have to res be respectful. Where are we from? You have to respect older people. You don't yet talk to anybody anyhow, no. They say the city, the city of dreams, and yeah, it's moving near. Definitely stay, stay humble at all times. Uh, you don't want to get carried away in anything you do, so stay humble, keep your feet on the ground. You came from, uh, from nothing, you know, and you're coming to something, so you gotta keep that mind check going. They've done a great job of bringing him up because he is a, he's a very humble kid. You know, I'm not worried for him at the moment. Um, but as the train moves slowly along and uh, more people jump on the train and uh, more hype goes with him because it will, it will come as he develops as a, as a person and player uh, and gets better each day and each year, uh, then there'll be bigger expectations for him. And, uh, and that's when young players especially try, uh, find it difficult and get easily led. Um, because there's always people out there who want to make things difficult for you. So it's important, based upon his upbringing, you know, he's been excellent. Uh, he's a very grounded kid, he keeps his feet on the ground. And, and our job here is, my job is to keep his feet firmly on the ground and, and let his football do the talking. When you see a player that comes into training, you can tell if they have that, that capability of producing in games or tracking runners, like little things like that, those intangibles that people maybe don't see on the outside, but on the inside, every training, day in, day out, you see, that's what Alfonso has. And I think um, not only the personality and the work ethic, but those little intangible things that might not go a long way on paper, but when you're in the grind, when you're in the game, um, you know that he'll have your back, you know that he will do the right things, the little things that at the end of the day will get you those three points, will get you the win, and for him, success in the future. And that's what I see in Alfonso. Yes, I'm proud of him because he is, I've seen a lot of kids doing so many things. As I said, one day, nobody ever come and tell Alfonso, we saw Alfonso in the corner smoking cigarette, smoking this, smoking that, no. So I'm proud of him. That's why I'm at least, I, 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 I love him and I, I was I always talking to him. So don't follow bad friends. Be a good guy, be a good kid, be a good boy. If you join bad crew, well, it's over to him. But I know that he's not gonna do that. Are you okay? I'm good, Dad, how are you? And I'm good. <laughs> ah, that was spoon there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Mom. Hi, how are you? What are you eating? I'm, I'm eating cereal. Cereal, Mom, like that? Baby? <laughs> <laughs> game time. So today you have game? Seven? Yeah. Okay. We, I'll, I'll still sit down and wait. We'll wait and, and, and watch you. They shouldn't push you around today. Now we'll see you. We're waiting to watch you. Okay. I wish you the best. Okay, Shango. How many goals you scoring today? I'll, I'll start with one. Oh, okay. okay, then good. Promise. <laughs> Don't mess it up. I'll try not to. Okay. 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 I just thank God for his life and for his strength. I just want him to keep on doing what he's doing because he promised me before he left from here. So I know he will fulfill his promise. Want to see some more of this? Check out these goals over here. Hit subscribe to get all of our videos.
Oh, get it, 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 get it,